Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on how to administer the Montreal Cognitive Assessment. This assessment is specifically designed to screen for mild cognitive dysfunction. So I'll be going through the various sections of this instrument and explaining uh, how it is administered. You may notice similarities between this instrument and the mini mental status examination. Uh, the MMSE is designed to detect moderate to severe cognitive dysfunction. Uh, the Montreal Cognitive Assessment uh, specifically designed for mild cognitive dysfunction, although there, when you score it, you will see that there is uh, scoring for moderate and severe cognitive dysfunction as well. So let's start with the first section of this instrument, visuospatial slash executive. And before I get started uh, explaining this section, I want to talk about how instruments are administered in general. It is important uh, in mental health, uh, with very few exceptions, that instruments be administered uniformly, uh, consistently. So there's an exact method to administering each section of this instrument and each section of any instrument uh, that you would be administering. So the phrases that I'll be using uh, come right from the scoring instructions for this instrument and they are to be used in precisely the way that it is delineated in the instructions uh, without variation. Similarly, the scoring is uh, rigid and consistent. Um, so I'll be going over those different rules and uh, methods of delivering the instrument. But keep in mind that generally applies to all psychometric instruments. So starting with the first category, here you can see uh, on the screen uh, toward the left, there is a one with a circle around it and underneath it has the word begin. So for this section, you will tell the client, uh, please draw a line going from a number to a letter in ascending order. Begin here and you will point to where it says begin and draw a line from one then to A, then to 2, and so on. And here, at that time, you'll point to E, and you'll see the word end underneath of there. So uh, the client will attempt this section, and you will give a point if the client successfully draws the pattern 1A, 2B, 3C, 4D, 5E, without drawing any lines that cross one another. Any error that is not immediately self-corrected is a score of zero. So moving to uh, the cube, The instructions for this are fairly straightforward. You indicate to the client, copy this drawing as accurately as you can in the space below. Uh, a point is given for a correctly, correctly executed drawing. The drawing must be three-dimensional, all the lines must be drawn, and no lines can be added. The lines need to be relatively parallel and their length similar. And so no point is awarded if any of those criteria are not met. So then we move to the draw clock section. And again, the instructions for this section uh, are, are fairly straightforward. Draw a clock put in all the numbers and set the time 
to 10 past 11. And you can see here that is uh, broken down, 10 past 11, uh, on, on the actual instrument. So the scoring. For the contour, uh, there's a possibility of earning one point. The clock face must be a circle with only minor dis with only minor distortions being acceptable. So, for example, uh, upon closing the circle, there might be a uh, slight imperfection. So, if the circle is correct, that is one point, and that would be indicated down here. The numbers. All the clock numbers must be present. No additional numbers can be present. The numbers must be in the correct order and placed in approximately where they would go on a clock face. Ro Roman numerals are okay, and the numbers can be placed outside the circle. If the client meets those criteria, one point is awarded here. A maximum one point can be awarded for the hands. There must be two hands jointly indicating the correct time. And the hour hand must be clearly shorter than the minute hand. And the hands must be centered within the clock face with their junction close to the center of the clock. When the client is complete and you have scored uh, this section, you'll indicate their score out of five here on the right. I would highly recommend um, scoring the instrument at the end. Right, so, so marking these as needed, uh, but putting the points in at the end. It can be uh, discouraging uh, to a client uh, if they are taking this uh, instrument and perhaps in this one section they don't perform very well and uh, you write in you know one out of five or two out of five and that could bias uh, the total score that could discourage them so uh, you want to make sure that you don't indicate, in my opinion, you don't indicate the score until uh, you score at the end. So it'll be in front of you at that point, um, and the client will not be able to see it. Therefore, it won't affect how they perform in the other sections. So now you move on to the next section, and among the many things I like about this instrument is the sections are clearly uh, marked. This one is naming, and uh, this is a fairly straightforward uh, section, relatively easy to score. You tell the client, uh, tell me the name of this animal, and they will um, tell you the name of uh, this animal, or, you know, attempt to, and the name of this one, and a third animal, and there is a uh, specific uh, set of responses which is acceptable. If they meet the acceptable response, uh, they'll be given one point. Again, you can see that uh, they'll be scored out of three. For this first animal, uh, the only response is acceptable is lion. <coughs> it's a lion, so that's, that's the response we're looking for. Uh, there's two possible responses for um, this animal. Uh, one is rhinoceros, another is rhino. And similarly, there are two possible responses for this animal. Uh, the first is camel, and the second is dromedary. So at this point in the assessment, the client will no longer have the assessment in front of them. Clearly they will need the assessment in front of them to uh, complete the first section, the lines, to draw the cube, to draw the clock, 
and to see the animals. So at this point, uh, as you move to memory, since the client will not um, have an opportunity to see the instrument again, it's okay to then populate uh, this value and this value, All right? because it will not bias how the client may perform on the rest of the instrument because they will not see it. So moving to the memory section, uh, you'll notice uh, that, well, there's a, f a few points that stand out. Uh, one is that this is administered twice, uh, but the second is that there are no points awarded for this section. Uh, that's because there's a recall section later. It's called delayed recall. And actually, you can see it toward the bottom of the screen. Uh, so this is important to, is, you can't skip this section. It's important to run through this section or else the delayed recall section uh, you, you won't be able to execute it, so the instrument won't be valid. So as you start uh, the memory section, uh, you'll tell the client, uh, this is a memory test. I am going to read a list of words that you will have to remember now and later on. Listen carefully. When I am through, tell me as many words as you can remember. It doesn't matter in what order you say them. All right, so those are the specific instructions. Um, the, this instrument, of course, and the instructions are both available on the website at the bottom of this uh, instrument. But I want to go through each step to uh, describe how, is it, how it is administered. So after you uh, explain or, or give those instructions to the client, you will put a check in the space for each word that the client rec uh, recalls on the first trial. Of course, you'll read the words next. Uh, one thing to note about reading these words both here and uh, in the delayed recall is you keep uh, the words spaced out uh, one second, approximately one second apart. So after you read them, they'll attempt to recall them, and you'll mark in the corresponding box on the first trial. And then you'll say, I'm going to read the same list for a second time. Try to remember and tell me as many words as you can, including words you said the first time. And again, you'll put a check in the appropriate box. It doesn't matter if the client had a point for each word. They could have they could have uh, recalled this entire section correctly, uh, so had a correct response for each word. You're still going to move forward with the second trial. It's important for the delayed recall function. After scoring the second trial, uh, you'll tell the client, um, "I will ask you to recall those words again at the end of the test." So again, there are no points awarded for this section. Then we move to attention. This section has three distinct types of uh, test. Uh, the first is divided into two sections, forward digit span and backward digit span. This is the forward digit span. So you'll issue the following instruction. I am going to say some numbers, and when I am through, repeat them to me exactly as I said them. Then you'll read these five numbers again, leaving uh, a second uh, between them. Then you'll move to the backward digit span, and you'll say, now I'm going to say some more numbers, but when I am through, you must repeat them to me in the backwards order. And you'll read the three number sequence, leaving a second between each digit. 
So for the scoring, uh, one point is awarded for each sequence that is correctly repeated. Therefore, we have a maximum of two. One thing I like to note here, in terms of the way these instructions are worded, uh, you like you know, of course, you're looking at this as the uh, uh, counselor administering the instrument. You know, there's five digits here, but it's worded. Uh, now I'm going to say some numbers, not five numbers. Similarly, uh, you don't say three numbers here. So this is the first section. Now we have the second section. The section is called Vigilance. So the, the fall instruction will be issued. I am going to read a sequence of letters Every time I say the letter A, tap your hand once. If I say a different letter, do not tap your hand. These letters will be read at a rate of one per second. You will give one point if there are no errors or one error. Otherwise, it'll be zero points. The next section is called Serial 7 Subtraction. And the instructions here are fairly straightforward. I will ask you to count by subtracting 7 from 100, and then keep subtracting 7 from your answer until I tell you to stop. So the uh, client will start uh, with 93 or perhaps not with 93 but with some number and they will continue uh, and you'll stop them once they reach to once they reach the fifth response right uh, which could of course be 65 if they're correct. And the scoring is fairly straightforward and it's right the uh, different scoring categories are right here if they have all of them correct or uh, they're wrong on one of them or incorrect on one of them it is three points uh, two or three correct is two points one correct is one point and of course zero correct is zero points Now, what's not listed here in the instrument, but is important to note, is that each subtraction, each numerical response the client provides to you, is independently evaluated. So, for example, if they are off on the first answer, uh, say they provide an answer of 90, all right, that would be an incorrect response because 93 is their correct response. But say they provide a response of 83 and then subsequently 76 and so on, they'll only that's only considered one incorrect response. That would be for the 90 instead of the 93 because they successfully subtracted 7 from that point on. So that's an important exception um, from what you may initially believe just by looking at this section of the attention uh, part of the test. So then we move on to language. Now, of course, you may remember that from naming, at the end of naming, or the beginning of memory, uh, the client's not going to see the instrument anymore. So they, they won't be able to see uh, these sentences or, or up here in this attention area or any of these items. And with this section, you're going to be saying the sentence and they're going to be trying to say it back exactly as you said it. So it's important to 
as the uh, person administering, as the counselor administering assessment, to be precise in your pronunciation and clear in your pronunciation of these sentences. So you'll start by saying, I am going to read you a sentence. Repeat it after me, exactly as I say. And then you're going to, you're going to want to pause. I only know that John is the one to help today. Then, of course, uh, they'll attempt their response. Then you will say, now I'm going to read you another sentence. Repeat it after me, exactly as I say it. And then you'll pause. The cat always hid under the couch when dogs were in the room. The client will attempt to repeat this sentence. One point is awarded for a sentence that is correctly repeated. The repetition must be exact. So for this section in particular, where you're dealing with these sentences, be mindful of small error, small errors. Uh, for example, if uh, they use the word hide instead of hid, or if they uh, remove a plural, like if they say when a dog was in the room, or if they add a plural, there's a lot of different errors that can occur in repeating just one sentence. Any error earns uh, zero points, no points. So this is the first section of the language component, and now we have the uh, second section. This is the verbal fluency section. So the instructions for this section are fairly long and involved as compared to the instructions for other sections of this instrument. So issue the following instruction. Tell me as many words as you can think of that begin with a certain letter of the alphabet that I will tell you in a moment. You can say any kind of word you want except for proper nouns like Bob or Boston. Numbers or words that begin with the same sound but have a different suffix. For example, love, lover, loving. I will tell you to stop after one minute. Are you ready? Now at this time you'll pause. Now, tell me as many words as you can think of that begin with the letter F. You're going to time this uh, using whatever timing mechanism you have available, a watch or uh, a smartphone. You're going to time this for 60 seconds. At the end of that time, you're simply going to say, stop. If the client was able to generate 11 words or more, then they'll get one point. It's a one point item. So now we move on to uh, abstraction. This section uh, is a little different from many of the sections because there's kind of a practice run uh, with the relationship here between banana and orange. And then there's two uh, scored uh, pairs here. So the counselor will start by saying, tell me how an orange and a banana are alike. If the subject, well, I like to say client, the instructions say subject. If the client answers in a concrete manner, then say only one additional time. Tell me another way in which those items are alike. 
If the client does not respond appropriately at that point, say yes, and they are also both fruit. Do not give any additional instructions or clarification. So this is the practice trial. After the practice trial, you'll move into the first squared trial. And you'll say, now, tell me how a train and a bicycle are alike. Listen for the response and administer the second trial. Now, tell me how a ruler and a watch are alike. Remember, no additional instructions or clarification. As I mentioned, only the last two items, these two items are scored for a maximum two-point score. You'll give one point for each item pair where a correct answer was provided. So for train bicycle, uh, the following responses are acceptable. Means of transportation, means of traveling, uh, or you take trips in both. The following responses are not acceptable, uh, or the following response is not acceptable. Uh, they both have wheels. Right? That's not acceptable for train bicycle. For watch and ruler, acceptable answers are measuring instruments or used to measure. Uh, not acceptable would be uh, they both have numbers. So now we move on to the delayed recall section. Of course you may remember it was set up uh, earlier in the instrument with a non-scored uh, section. And that there was two trials to set this up. And you did tell the client that you would be asking these words later. So in this section you'll say, I read some words to you earlier which I ask you to remember. Tell me as many of those words as you can remember. Now you're going to mark for each of the words correctly recalled spontaneously without any cues. So don't offer any prompts, no cues. They need to remember uh, or take their best guess to remember these words uh, with no help. And a point is awarded for each correct response. And that is what that number of points, of course, goes here. It's out of five. Now you see here there's an optional section. And I want to make sure I cover this as well. This can be important depending on why you are providing this instrument. For most of the uh, instances when you'll be using this instrument, the optional section is probably not required. But under certain circumstances, you're going to want to perform the optional section. Uh, an important note, the optional section of delayed recall is not scored. It has nothing to do with the final score. So what you would do is after this section here is complete and you've scored, uh, then you'll move to the optional section if it's appropriate. And you'll start with a category cue. Now this is uh, only for non-recalled words. Right? So if they so for example, if they recalled face you wouldn't provide a category Q for face because they already recalled that correctly. But say they did not recall velvet, you would use a category Q. All right. So for face, 
the category Q, if, you were, if they had not recalled face, the category Q is part of the body. For velvet, it's type of fabric. For uh, church, it's type of building. Daisy, type of flower. And red, uh, a color. So you go through any non-recalled words and provide those specific category cues and then check off where the words were successfully recalled. If when you get through this stage there are still words that are non-recalled you move to what they call multiple choice and for face again if it was not not recalled for uh, with no Q or with category Q, you would provide them uh, three choices. Nose, face, hand for velvet, denim, cotton, velvet. For church, church, school, hospital. For daisy, rose, daisy, tulip. And for red, red, blue, and green. If they select the correct word, then you will mark it in the appropriate space. Again, remember this whole section is not scored. So if this section is not scored, you may be wondering why is it on this instrument? Well, it gives you more information as a clinician as you're interpreting the test results about the type of memory disorder that you may be um, facing or the client may be facing. So for memory deficits due to retrieval failures, performance can be improved when you provide the client a cue. If the memory deficits are caused by encoding failures, performance would not improve with a cue. So then we move on to the uh, final section of the instrument, orientation. You'll start this section by issuing the following instruction. Tell me the date today. If the client does not give a complete answer, then prompt by saying, tell me the year, month, exact date and day of the week. Right, depending on which one of these that you're going through. Then you'll say, now tell me the name of this place and which city it is in. So this will be the actual name of the, the building. Uh, for example, the name of the agency uh, or the office, and this of course is the city. One point is awarded for a perfect answer on these different items. So if they're off by one day for the date, there's no points awarded. Right? There can be no errors for a point to be awarded on uh, each of these categories. After you have completed the orientation section and you have uh, put the points in for that section and all these sections, uh, you'll come down to the final scoring. And you'll see, of course, that the instrument has uh, a maximum of 30 points. So if the client scored 30 points, uh, you'd put that in, it'd be 30 out of 30. Uh, if they did not, uh, make sure you check this rule, which is uh, you will add one point if the client has less than or equal to 12 years of education. Now sometimes when you hear this phrase, uh, 12 years of education, we think, well that must mean the person has um, a high school diploma. Uh, but that's not uh, what this means. This means uh, like to qualify for 
the you know less than or equal to 12 years it's any 12 years of education so if somebody stopped if a client stopped at 10th grade and they had 10 years uh, say they completed 10th grade and they went back to another type of school 10 years later and received three years of education that would put them over the limit and they would not get the one point so it's any 12 years uh, not necessarily the way we might think about it in terms of uh, going from grade 1 through 12 um, if there's an interruption then with some other type of special schooling uh, that still counts in this year total so if they have less than or equal to 12 years as described in uh, by those parameters uh, you would add one point again if they scored 30 there's no need to uh, but if they scored less than 30 you'd add the point and you can see here uh, that the one the one uh, score possibility the one category is right on the front of the instrument which is greater or equal to 26 is considered normal meaning no cognitive dysfunction however the instrument has categories for other scoring ranges a score of 18 to 26 it actually be 25 uh, is considered mild cognitive impairment 10 to 17 would be moderate cognitive impairment and less than 10 would be severe cognitive impairment. As I mentioned before, uh, this uh, instrument and the instructions are available on the website that they have here at the, at the bottom. And as with all instruments, uh, make sure before administering the Montreal Cognitive Assessment you are familiar with the instructions and that you are uh, have reached a level of clinical competency to where you are ethically permitted to administer the assessment. I want to thank you for watching my video. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.